Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Sleep Breakdown for Tuesday, September 17th. We got a big slate uh, on tap here. No football tonight, so MLB is center stage and we'll be going through this slate, breaking down best pitchers, high-owned pitchers, some pivots to consider, and then we'll get into some stacks. Before all of that, we're going to go over the perfect lineups from yesterday for baseball, and then the winning fan duel lineup. Unfortunately, I don't have the DraftKings one again, um, but I uh, hopefully we'll be able to start getting those again very soon. Now, let's uh, get back into this uh, slate. Before we do, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Helps us a ton just to get a little more reach and keep giving away content for free. And hey, possibly hire more people to give more content for free. Now, let's uh, get into it. So, starting with FanDuel, we got the perfect lineup. Andrew Palante putting up 58. Guy went nuts. Seven innings, zero earned runs, nine Ks versus Pitt. Have yourself a game. You know, I thought he was in an okay spot. I didn't talk about him because I just didn't believe myself a little bit there, but uh, I guess I should have. You know, he, he had a game. I only had like two lineups with him. Really wish I had more. So congrats to him. Then hitting-wise, two-man White Sox stack. And then all all one offs, you we spent down at pitcher and still didn't get anywhere near <laughs> the uh, all the using all the salary here three eighteen point seven total. Then the winning lineup went to L Dubiz, who uh, had Palante. Then they had a four man White Sox stack, a two man Arizona with Mookie Betts and Bobby Witt Jr., who just had himself a game. Five RBIs, a home run, a stolen base, a run, a single. Good job, young man. You crushed it. And now let's get over to DraftKings and see what we got over there. We got Shata. We got Palante as the two pitchers. A two-man White Sox stack here as well. And then one-offs uh, with my, my boy, good old MVP Profar, uh, rounding it out there. Another spot where we didn't use close to all of the salary. Now, let's get into today's slate, see what we got, and dig into it. All right, so highest owned pitcher is Cole Reagans. Cole Reagans is in a good spot versus the Tigers. I don't mind going here whatsoever. He's got big time upside, that strikeout upside that we need. Tigers haven't been good versus lefties over the last... Uh, 20 games. They do have a two, 223 uh, Woba, or sorry, 323 Woba, and a 195 ISO. So they've been hitting the ball hard, getting on base, but their average is only 233. I think it's still a decent spot for Cole Reagans. He's just got to miss the bats, not give up, you know, multi uh, run home runs, and I think he's in tap for a good game. We have a huge 33.6% combined K rate in this spot. So the upside is giant. Uh, from a median perspective, I don't you know, think he's in the best spot ever, but he is in a very, very good upside spot. And one which he has crushed in the past. Earlier this season, six innings, 12 Ks versus them. Uh, when he saw him last month, 5.2 innings, two earned runs, six Ks. So we have two games. I mean, he's averaging this year versus them nine Ks a game. So there's big time upside. I like Reagan's. He should be definitely one of the higher owned pitchers. Next, we got Zach Wheeler, 10.5 K, 2.2 X. Look, Wheeler is dominant. You know what you're going to get. He pretty much every game comes out and gives you mid 20s. I expect that to happen again in this spot. Milwaukee has been hitting the ball very well. I don't love facing them from an offense, but at least they strike out 22, 23%. And Wheeler has been incredible lately. 2.22 FIP, 30.3% K rate. Absolutely interested in some Wheeler. 
and 26.1% combined K rate in the spot. I don't mind it whatsoever. Uh, Reagan's definitely has the upside, but Andy's cheaper, but very interested in Wheeler as well. Next, we got Tyler McGill versus the Nationals. Now, Nationals have not been good versus righties, so it is a little interesting to go here, but I think he is going over owned. He's a decent pitcher, you know, FIP of 3.95, 24% K rate. There's definitely upside. When he's on, he's shown us the ability to get to 30, but his most likely outcome is going five innings, 5.1, four, five Ks or five, six Ks, one, two earned run. And, you know, that's it. So can he do that in this spot? Absolutely. Can he go six innings with nine Ks? I, I think it's going to be hard. One thing, he's only been going 76 pitches over his last five starts. He 88 over the last 20. So I think we can expect mid 80s pitches from him, but he is not super efficient. So I think it's going to be hard for him to work uh, six innings. Now that matters much more for FanDuel than it does DraftKings, but you know it also hurts his chances for the win bonus. However, he is averaging 53% more fantasy points at home. Would I play him? I'll have a little bit of him. Will I go overboard Will, uh, with him? Probably not. Griffin Canyon at 6K I think is actually very interesting in this spot versus the White Sox. He averages... 26% more at home. This is a pitcher who has been pretty bad this season. I, he has lost it, but he has big time upside and we have a track record of him, you know, in the high twenties, low thirties, and he's at six K with 2.1 X value. So the median projection is even okay. But my thing here is I think there's big time ceiling potential in this for his price. I am very interested in Griffin Canning. Now, with that being said, if he gets super high owned, I'm fine to stack the White Sox also because we've seen Canning just get blown up time and time again this year. 10 runs last start, three runs a few starts ago, seven runs versus Atlanta, four runs versus Washington, six runs versus Colorado. We've seen it over and over again. So I am absolutely playing both sides of this spot. But I am interested in that upside for Canyon. And I I don't really think he's going to go 20% owned or almost 20% owned. I think he ends up lower than that. And if that's the case, I want some. Lou Gill versus the Seattle Mariners in Seattle. So we're in a very pitcher-friendly uh, park. Seattle strikes out 25% versus righties, but over the last 20 games, 276 average, 170 ISO, 353 WOBA. This, this offense has been much better lately. I don't really want to pick on this offense right now with a guy that has a FIP of five over the last five starts. 3.94 over the last 20. The thing and the redeeming aspect of him is he has big time upside. So I'm willing to get a little bit of him for that upside, but I think there's huge volatility in this spot for uh, Lou Gill. So I'm a little worried about that. I want a little bit, not that much. 23% combined K rate isn't quite enough for me at 8.8K to really want to get some. Jordan Wicks. 25% K rate versus lefties for Oakland. Very solid ISO numbers, so they hit the ball hard. It all depends on if ball, if, uh, you know, people are on base when he gives it up. But look, he has a FIP of 4.68, FIP of 6.6 .6 over the last five. I am not touching Jordan Wicks. Michael King, this is a very tough spot. I think King is a very talented pitcher. I really like his upside, but he's in a really hard spot versus Houston. Houston got shut out by Darvish last night. Could they do it again? Yes. Will they do it again? I don't know. I, I like King because he is so low owned. I'm willing to have a little bit, but 
upside is limited due to Astros 17 percent uh, K rate over the last 150 versus righties and 18 percent over the last 20. I do have to bring up the fact though that over the last 20, their Wobos 299, their ISOs 131, their average is only 240 or 254. So they haven't been swinging the bat like the Astros as of late. I have a little bit of interest in Michael King, but I worry about how much upside he has. For King to be one of the optimal pitchers, we're going to need Reagans and Wheeler to fail. That is uh, the issue. Will it happen? I don't know. They're in better spots than he is. Brian Wu versus the Yankees. He is way better at home, 46% more fantasy points at home. So I have some interest because he's at home with how much better he is at home. Three of the last five starts he's had have been on the wet, on the road. He has a 4.83 FIP. I don't think that is a, a coincidence there. His big time games have all been at home. He has the ability to get you upper 20s. It is a very tough spot. So I don't want much, but I'm also interested in a little bit of pivot for him. Nathan Navaldi versus the Blue Jays. Blue Jays have been hitting very well lately. Navaldi averaging 33% more at home. So I have a little bit of interest here, but not much. I, I don't really want to pick off on this uh, Blue Jays team. So it's been hitting very well and has hit Navaldi very well. Navaldi just since 2021 hasn't had a very good game or really 2020 hasn't had a very good game versus Toronto and Toronto has been hitting. All right. So I'm not really going there. Frankie Montas in a tough spot versus the Phillies. Don't really want to pick on the Phillies, but I got to bring up the fact that Montas with Milwaukee is a different pitcher. He's been pitching very, very well. 3.03 FIP, 27% K rate. Stat cast data looks good. He's just in a very tough spot versus the Phillies. He is only 7.4 K, so I am willing to have a little. And frankly, I think I would rather have uh, Montas than Tyler McGill in this spot for a little less salary, uh, even though McGill has a little bit better of a matchup. So... Uh, I think it's an interesting spot, fully willing to take some. Lance Lynn versus the Pirates. We know the Pirates aren't that great. Lance Lynn averaging 57% more fantasy points at home. And at only 7.5, he can get it done. He can give you a mid-20s. It hasn't happened much uh, this year, but it does happen a little bit. And I'm slightly interested in some Lance Lynn. Hunter Brown, 9K. Uh, this pitching matchup. Uh, King versus Brown is extremely good, and it's going to be a pretty good game, I think. And I don't mind going to some Hunter Brown, but the fact that his strikeout rate is only 24% over the last five starts and the Padres just don't strike out really makes me not really want to go here. Just not much upside. If you want to, he's going to be unowned, so... There is some reason to go there, but I'm probably not. Outside of that, uh, I'm pretty much done here. Uh, not really wishing to go to anybody else. There's a couple options you kind of can. Mitch Parker has been pretty good lately. 2.5 FIP, 25% K rate over his last five. Uh, Mets are going to be without Lindor, so that's a plus. Versus lefties, they're only hitting 240 over the last 20 games, but 220 ISO, 336 Woba. So they still just hit lefties hard. So it's not really a spot I want to go to. And then everybody else, I'm I'm off here. Uh, now, let's get over to FanDuel. See what we got on good old FD. All right, highest owned, Cole Reagans, 10.4K, 39% owned. Uh, Lou Gill, 9.5, next highest owned. I think that's wrong. I think Wheeler should be there over uh, over Gill. And Wheeler, I, I think ownership is way too high on Reagan's comp compared to Wheeler on FanDuel, and that's my thing here. I'd probably have a little more Wheeler than I would Reagan's uh, 
when you consider ownership. Just from a matchup spot, I would take Reagans, though. Uh, Griffin Canyon, 7.7K. If he's super low owned on FanDuel, I'm a little interested. The reason being is he can get me high 40s at 7.7K. So it wouldn't take, uh, you know, it, most likely Wheeler in this matchup is going high 40s. I don't really expect 60s out of him. Don't even really expect high, low 50s out of him. And then Cole Reagans, that uh, mid 50s is there. But if he gets, you know, if he just has a solid game and he's mid 40s or high or low 50s, you could possibly get that out of Griffin Canning at 7,700 in this spot. The only reason I like him is because of the matchup and the fact that there is, you know, continued or there has been success with him and when we have seen that he has it together he has his strikeout stuff and he gives us upside uh lance lynn a little bit interested on him as well and then we go down uh tyler mcgill is a little interesting here but efficiency worries me he just doesn't go six very often uh michael king i'm a little interested in and that's about it uh, you could do Brian Wu if you want as well. He's another guy at 8.6K that can give you high 40s. It's just a tough spot, so I'm probably not going to have much of him. Now, get over to DraftKings and check out the stats. See what we got working with here. All right, our highest value play is the White Sox versus Griffin Canning. Makes total sense. Uh, White Sox had a solid game yesterday. Griffin Canning has been crushed over and over this season. I'm interested in canning, but it can all absolutely go the other way as well. Now our highest owned stacks, we got Arizona. I haven't even talked about this yet, but they have an 11.5 point total. Three and a half higher than anybody else. We have some low totals on this slate, except for this game. Arizona is gonna be super high owned as always. Colorado is less owned in Colorado. I am absolutely willing to go to Colorado in this spot. In fact, I like the spot to go to Colorado. Uh, Arizona versus Ryan Feltner. It's decent. 3.78 FIP over his last five. So he's been good recently, but 4.4 FIP over his last 20. Bullpen behind him is bad. I am all in. Now our highest projected. It's also Arizona. No surprise. They just have a 6.1 implied total. Nobody else is near that. And then our highest ceiling stacks, we got Arizona. We got Milwaukee versus Wheeler, which it's going to be very hard to see that ceiling versus Wheeler. Is it possible? Yes, but it will be difficult. Cubs versus uh, Spence. Spence has actually been good lately with a FIP of 3 and then a FIP of 4.32 over the last 20. They, they can hit him. He... He has got crushed before. It wouldn't be the first and it won't be the last. So I don't mind that one. Clicking the teams. So we go 6.1 implied total down to 5.4 for Colorado. It's versus Jordan Montgomery. 5.22 FIP over his last five. 4.44 over his last 20. The bullpen behind him isn't great. I think Colorado is very intriguing. Uh, Cubs at 4.4. Royals at 4.4. Angels at 4.4. All three of those are interesting, but the White Sox bullpen is the worst out of them. I would give them a slight nod over the other ones. Mets at 4.2 versus Mitch Parker. There is going to be no Lindor, so I don't love stacking them quite as much just because that offense takes a big hit there, but if you want to, I get it. 4.1 for Houston, Philly, and San Diego. Of those three, I think Philly is the most interesting. Montas, 4.34 FIP over his last 20. He has been way better in Milwaukee. Doesn't mean he can turn back into Frankie Montas' Cincinnati version. He very, very well could. Uh, at 4.1, we also have St. Louis and Texas. I think St. Louis is interesting. They've been hitting decent lately. Falt Faulkner is, is decent, but not unhittable and the bullpen behind him is bad 
And then we have Texas. I love picking on the Toronto bullpen. Depending on who their starter is, could be a very, very nice spot. So that'll do it for us today. I also want to should bring up that I'm interested in this Toronto stack. Evaldi, he's kind of like Nick Pavetta in the fact that he has some really good games. He's more consistent than Pavetta, but uh, he can get got, and the bullpen behind him is bad. If they get to him early, it can turn real bad for uh, Texas. Real good for Toronto, so a little interested in that one as a uh, low-owned stack. That'll do it for us today, guys. You have a good one. We will be back tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye. Good luck.